Dear guests, welcome back at the Prague European Summit's Golden Hall. Now we have uh, time for the next discussion, uh, one of the top discussions that we will have uh, during the program of the Prague European Summit. Uh, and this time we will discuss uh, whether Europe can lead in the green and digital transformation. And I am very happy that we have uh, great speakers for uh, this uh, panel uh, that will take us uh, approximately one hour. And after this panel, uh, we will proceed with uh, vision for Europe ever ceremony. So for sure stay here. And uh, regarding some organizational uh, issues, I would like to ask you if, he, if there is any free seats uh, next to you, try to move into the middle of the, of the hall so people who are still entering the room can find the seat easily. So please try to go a little bit into the middle of the, of the hall, take the seats which are in the, in the middle. Thank you very much. Uh, so that's from the organizational side. I think that we can start uh, with this uh, super important uh, panel discussion. Uh, I would like to now uh, invite uh, my colleague, journalist uh, as well, uh, Wester van Gaal, uh, who is a journalist from EU Observer. EU Observer is among the top uh, partners, media partners of the whole summit, and uh, it's great that uh, Wester van Gaal can moderate uh, this, uh, this particular discussion. Uh, and I would like to also ask uh, our dear speakers uh, to take their seats, uh, to join us here on the stage. Uh, you can choose uh, <laughs> the seats would you like to take take so you can come here <laughs> and uh, so yes you can you can take the seats and I will now pass the floor to uh, to my colleague Wester van Gaal to to take the floor and to moderate uh, this uh, panel discussion so uh, please the floor is yours yes thank you thank you so much thank you also for inviting me uh, to moderate here and to uh, share the stage with uh, the learned panel next to me. Uh, Dawn of a new age, very, uh, very big title. I think we might conclude after these talks. I don't know, we might already be past dawn a little bit, uh, approaching high noon. Um, let me first introduce uh, all the uh, panelists next to me. Uh, first, uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, for Digitization, Ivan Bartos. Good evening to everyone. Uh, uh, next to uh, Mr. Bartos is Minister of Digital Transformation, Emilia uh, Stoimenova Duch. Hello. Was that okay? Okay. Um, on the other side um, is uh, Monika Latmanova, I'm very sorry. Okay. Head of the European Commission representation of the Czech Republic, uh, who will give us uh, also an overview uh, of all the uh, discussions. And next to me is Liliana Pavlova, Vice President of the European Investment Bank. Mm -hmm. And I think we could start off by just giving you each the floor and, and just sh shortly, uh, you know, think about what it entails for Europe to become a leader in the twin uh, transitions. And I would also challenge you to start and also maybe uh, give us a sense of what this leadership means because we've been talking about uh, you know, uh, resource independence and also about the technological innovation, but it also means something more. Like uh, someone in the previous panel said, uh, we're in a, in a battle of narratives, right? So what actually means our leadership in these two transitions, please. So, um, good evening, everybody, dear Vice Prime Minister, dear Minister and Vice President, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for inviting me. I came here to confirm, to confirm that the green and digital transition still lies in the heart of the political agenda of the European Union. And it is despite uh, the changed context in which these two priorities were defined. It was at the beginning of the mandate of the current European Commission led by President von der Leyen. And these two priorities, the green and digital transition, are of a different nature and of a different dynamics. 
the climate change and the environmental degradation is an uh, existential threat to Europe and to the entire world. So the green transition will not happen on its own. And the European Green Deal, you know it all, it is uh, to set the objectives and the measures to achieve the change and not to let the planet to disappear. The European Green Deal uh, is meant to transform the EU into the modern, resource efficient and competitive economy which leaves no one and no place behind. While the digitalization and the digital transformation is changing our lives as we speak. It is changing the way we communicate, the way we do business, the way we do politics. And the European Digital Strategy aims to make this transformation work for people and for the business, while also helping to achieve the, digital, the, the green transition and the decarbonization. Because, as you know, in June 2021, the member states of the European Union took a landmark decision and the binding target of achieving the carbon neutrality by 2050. Tragically, the Russian aggression towards Ukraine, the war in Ukraine, which makes a lot of people suffering and also uh, devastating the infrastructure, has uh, drastic consequences for the food security, for the energy situation, for other segments of our economy, hence for the digital and the green transition. But as the European Union, we are not backtracking, we adapt. New measures were taken to respond to the Russian aggression. And let me remind ourselves the swiftness, how the decision was made. It was before COVID that taking the decision at the European level took years. During the COVID, it was months. And now during the war, it's just weeks. So I think it deserves a reflection. Currently, the Czech presidency to the European Council is progressing on both agendas, on the green and the digital agenda as well. As we speak, the COP27 in Egypt is discussing how to better cooperate to address the uh, climate change, change and its devastating impact on the world. The commitments to the green and digital transition is underpinned by the European actions, a lot of initiatives, and of course, by massive and robust investment. These two transitions are intertwined, I don't have to tell you, and majority of the reduction of the CO2 emissions by 2030 will be made or available due to the existing technologies, while the decarbonization by 2050 will be available by technologies which are now only in the prototype or demonstration phase. In other words, the digital technologies like the Internet of Things or artificial intelligence or the data-based technologies play a key role in addressing the climate change and the reduce, the, the reducing the, um, the degradation of the environment. A lot needs to be done, indeed. Uh, it needs, of course, the massive uptake and the uh, rollout of the green technologies by industry. The reform of the economy into more circularity is needed, and we also shouldn't forget about the profound shifts we can anticipate at the European labor market in all sectors. And this whole transition can be successful only if it is accompanied by the adequate policy framework. The European policy framework will also need to adapt. It will need to adapt to economic, to technological, and also social developments. But again, I'm here to confirm that the European Commission is taking targeted actions in supporting the development of emerging technologies and funding projects, which will drive the climate change and uh, the neutrality by 2050. This will be my statement for the beginning. Thank you so much. Uh, and I would leave, 
I would want to ask Mr. Bartish to also um, give an opening sp statement and also maybe ask him what, you know, as a person with deep knowledge of, of digital systems, what your priorities are and, and, and what the challenges are you, you see in front of you. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I maybe start a little bit differently. Uh, the two crises, the last two crises, I hope last two crises, when the war on Ukraine will be over and there will be a peace and the COVID for two years, learn us one thing. If uh, economy is prosperous, uh, even though we've got uh, common goals, common targets, it seems to us that we have a plenty of time to do the transformation to fulfill the commitments. And uh, if we take a look on both topics, green on one hand and the digital, it was Joschka Fischer almost 40 years ago when they went to the Bundestag, elected Greens, being uh, weirdos when no one understands what they are saying. Oh, we cannot pollute the planet with the CO2 and with emissions and produce that and that. We should take care of environment because it's smart. We are closely dependent on it to survive, to have a land give us food when we grow that. We just cannot poison the air and poison the rivers. In those some of 40 years, uh, the, the environmental policies became policies of any party, no matter if you are conservative, if you are uh, left or right, in different quality and uh, different, different uh, emphasis, everybody deals with that. As well, the digital transformation and transformation to information society I, I was born 1980, when it was a uh, millennium. I was like, cool, man, this is like the most cool time in the world. But we are 22, and it, the transformation is not speeding up to the needs that we do have. We've got excellent technology run by business, but it's not in the service of the individual governments to dealing with the everyday's life. It's also help people on the commercial basis, but we cannot do that same thing on the national level as well as a security. So I mean, and that was one first thing when I got as a minister to the cohesion forum, it was the eighth cohesion forum, when I, uh, and uh, Ursula von der Leyen was speaking there as well. So she was like so optimistic and it somehow a little bit infected me. It say, we've got long-term goals, right? We've got crisis, I understand you have a, a lack of money, but we're gonna invest, but we don't have to only face the crisis, do the post-COVID recovery, but we also have to keep the goals that we already agreed on. So better get in rush, work hard, we can achieve everything. And it may happen that we cannot achieve everything in the time we already said we will, but postponing that change, it's only you are buying your time. And obviously through both crises we went through, who was prepared more, who diverse, who had more renewables on the ground, was less affected by the crisis. As well, of the countries who were massively digitalized, who got technology in place already serving people, it could be national version of uh, EID, it could be a uh, healthcare system and, tele, uh, and uh, uh, telephonic healthcare uh, that, was, that was very, very sufficient during the COVID. States that they had uh, experience with online education could provide online education much better to the kids during the COVID when the schools were closed. And Czech Republic, and it's a sad thing, was the country of you whose schools were closed. Uh, uh, the most time of the of the COVID crisis. So basically, even with the digital technology, and you said there are a lot of narratives, it's something new, we don't need them. First, it's in there, and both, even the green transformation and the digital transformation, is a necessity to actually succeed in the future. Uh, and uh, when we combine those two, and it's very relevant, right, because what else could calculate the best process of producing something than artificial intelligence or, for example, quantum computing using an open data and open science results, which is another thing that is very important to information society. So both changes started many years ago. And if you've got working business module, right, we want to have a work-life balance. You know, you don't rush. 
But then, you know, if you are too late, you are missing something. Either your companies are not growing fast enough or there is a war you cannot, you know, feed your industry with energy. And one sad thing about this, that we are people, we make mistakes. Uh, and often you have to get a very tough lesson to actually say, wow, that was, from, that was smart from the very beginning. So when I'm seeing the strategies, the goal, the regulation framework and legislation, that's a something that we agreed that somehow applying the policies from the thoughts and strategies to the ground, because we already understand by those two last bad experiences with the crisis, that it is important and it is worth of that. And we have to carry this when we take the policies to the ground, when we do the projects. And sometimes it's hard to explain people, even of my generation, you know, why it is important. And then we can take it to very local level. It's hard for people to understand the complexity of climate change worldwide. You see some Africa states who are drying few more rains, less rains in the in the central Europe, but recently big fires even in Czech Republic or the earthquakes, right? And then you say, but how can I explain it to them closer? And then it means we provide you better job for more money in clean environment. And when you take it to the ground and say that chimney that's next to your house won't be there in 10 years. And even though if you are living close to let's say a highway, you know, which also produce a lot of noise. At least uh, electric cars doesn't do that, right? Uh, so, so when you take it to the ground, you can explain it to the people of the things that they very know. That's an opportunity. It's a better paid job. It's a healthy environment. And in that particular case, I still think we are a little bit failing because that's acceptance of the change that it's completely necessary. And you ask me about concrete things. I'm very happy we found agreement on the digital decade. Combined with the Green Deal, I think those are the main principles that we shall apply because a lot of technology consumes a lot of energy, which was mentioned here. Uh, and uh, uh, there is also unbelievable momentum of amount of investments. Either the money that are coming from Recovery Resilience Fund on as we uh, talk with Liliana about the options of even to teach institutions and municipalities and the states how to work with the sophisticated financial instruments and uh, we should spend not spend invest that money wisely into the transformation that would starting affordable housing health care anything would save money energy lives and get us to the very point and i believe we do it because of that and the leaders are promoting the policies because of that because it's that work-life balance it's a, it's a, it's an index of happiness we are trying to achieve. That you do reasonable work, can take care of your kid, you know, looking towards a happy retirement in the in the healthy environment, and to save the planet, of course, which is important thing. Let me give the word to Minister Doh. I, I hear a lot of overlap as well with with uh, the priorities here, and, and also, for example, using data to to, to optimize policies. Please let me know. Uh, what you're doing in Slovenia to, to, to increase digitization and to tackle these challenges. Okay, when we started uh, discussing today, I started with the infrastructure, but now I will go backwards. Uh, so when we are speaking about the green and digital transformation, a lot of times we are seeing from the perspective of technology, we are seeing from the perspective of uh, infrastructure. Uh, also today I was uh, speaking before we started uh, with uh, one of the participants about the infrastructure, but nothing really helps if we don't have the skills. So we really need the skills of the people so that they will be able to use that infrastructure. They will be able to use that technology. Otherwise, all the investments that we are putting there are just waste of money and time. So uh, in Slovenia, we are investing in infrastructure. We are investing in high-speed broadband. We are investing in uh, 5G as well. Uh, we are investing a lot uh, in new technologies. Uh, when I'm asked about what are the technologies, the trends uh, in the technologies, I don't want to speak about that. By education, I'm electrical engineer. <coughs> I know that these things change very fast. 
I don't want to speak what will happen in the next three years. I would like to speak about what are the needs of the people, because in my opinion, the uh, sustainable development goals, the climate change, this is our goal. The digital transformation is only the tool that will lead us there. So this is how I would like to speak. And, uh, our uh, job, uh, you are also uh, Minister for Digitalization, is just to find what kind of technologies will help us uh, to reach that. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, the skills are very important uh, to make sure that uh, really, and these are not only words, but that really no one is left behind. And not only on our national level, but on global level. Because it doesn't help if everybody in your country is digitally uh, skilled or is um, aware of the climate changes. We need everybody in the world. Uh, it is not enough if we are using green technologies in our country, but then we are uh, sending uh, the um, uh, other uh, kind of technologies in the neighboring countries because we are living on the same planet. Uh, so, uh, for us, it is important also to work uh, with uh, other countries as well, to share practices, uh, to share experience. Uh, another thing that is very important is um, not just to talk, but to act. So, uh, it is really time now. Uh, you said you were uh, born in the 80s, I was born in 85, so I, was, I had crisis after crisis after crisis. Uh, which is not always bad. When you're in a crisis, uh, then um, you uh, are able to make decisions. And now after uh, two uh, very uh, big crises, we had the health crisis, now we have uh, energy crisis, we have a very bad situation in Europe. And uh, it is really time to change our mindset and to decide what do we want and where we are aiming for. I know I'm not speaking about what we're doing in Slovenia, sorry, but my colleagues uh, motivated me to do that. Uh, so for, for me, it is very important, and in Slovenia, now it is the time uh, to say, okay, uh, we won't be global leaders when it comes to digital transformation in every field, but these are the niches where we would like to be the best. And if you like to be the best, it is not enough that we produce a lot of different papers and action plans and strategies and I don't know what kind of documents, but it is important to say, okay, this is where we want to go. We are going to dedicate resources. We are going to find the best experts. We are going to find the funds, whether it's public funding. If we don't have enough public funding, uh, we are going to find uh, some other uh, resources of funding and we are going there. And uh, what is also very important is to have leaders. So leaders uh, that are dedicated, leaders uh, that are also have the courage to do and not uh, only uh, speak. So I think this is what we're doing right now in Slovenia. Act and make the right choices. Like as a Dutchman, I can tell you because we are one of the first like early adapters in digitization and back in the 90s we made a lot of bad decisions right like so now we're figuring out like oh actually we don't have to write uh, systems now to adapt to this new uncertain world um vice president uh, pavlova yeah pre please uh yeah go ahead and and and, and, and reflect on this issue Okay. Thanks a lot. First of all, thanks a lot for the opportunity to be to be here today in this uh, excellent panel, and I'm really happy to see that it's uh, this time female <laughs> prevailing <laughs> as a number of uh, of panelists, which is which is great from from that perspective. And thank you for being brave of having <laughs> a being minority. Uh, but on the, on the serious stand, uh, stance, uh, I, will, uh, I was thinking to, to, to speak in the different uh, direction and manner, but I was also inspired uh, by, by, the, by my fellow uh, panelists. And uh, I would like indeed to, to, to start where you uh, finished, and these are really the, the skills and the leadership. Because uh, the point in your question was, uh, uh, can Europe lead? Europe can should and must, because uh, indeed we need Europe uh, 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 being a leader in both 
in, uh, in uh, green and digital transformation. We cannot afford to be laggers, neither in green nor in, in, uh, in digital transformation. And uh, we need to support innovation, we need to support uh, uh, skills, uh, dissemination of existing uh, and support of developing new technologies. Uh, and while I, I believe that today, today Europe is, uh, is already leader in, in, uh, in climate innovation, on green technologies, Europe is uh, definitely lagging behind on, uh, on, uh, on high technologies, on artificial intelligence, uh, big data and, and, and uh, um, machine learning, on, you name it, uh, the, 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 all, all technologies we have. So what is extremely important for us to accelerate to, and to, to channel the right uh, means and resources because technology, indeed technologies will shape the, 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 the future, the globe, and the, the technologies which are available today are not enough. They are not sufficient, they are not uh, the right, and they won't help us to succeed uh, in, uh, in our transition to, to, to carbon-free uh, economy. So uh, the, in order to shape uh, the, the future uh, with the right technologies, we need uh, private investors who are putting their money to, to risk, to innovate. But those private investors, those innovators, Need, uh, uh, need support of the public authorities, uh, creating the right policies, the right stimulus, and, uh, and public institutions like EIB, the European Investment Bank, which we are very interesting and very, how to say, sometimes strange uh, uh, to, to explain, because on one side we are a European institution, but at the same time we are a bank. And uh, we finance bankable, uh, well-prepared, mature projects. Uh, so, uh, there is a huge funding gap if we are to achieve green and digital transformation, if we are to advance with technologies to support innovation. Uh, and uh, I believe this is exactly our role as EU Climate Bank to, uh, to channel, to allocate the, the, the resources available, uh, both in the direction of financing good and mature project technologies, financing skills, knowledge sharing, uh, uh, trans uh, um, to, to, to support also transfer of, of, of knowledge and capacity, because sometimes we do have in Europe excellent uh, research and development uh, practices, institutions and centers, but in order these, these great minds and ideas to, 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 to become and uh, 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 to, be, to be realized on the market, we need, we need to provide extra mile, extra support for them. So this is, this is how I see uh, our role uh, as, as a institution and at the same time to provide uh, something of which we are, uh, of which we are really pri proud of, our in-house expertise, providing technical financial uh, uh, support. Uh, for, for, the, for the strategies, for the projects, for, for, for learning experience, because this is what we just discussed uh, with the Deputy Prime Minister. It's, uh, it's always good to share uh, experience, to give advice, how, how things should be done, what are the best ways, but also sharing uh, uh, lessons learned and experience of how things don't work, what are the best practices, uh, because uh, time is of essence. <coughs> we do we don't have time. We, we, ha we have very, very short time to act and to react. And uh, we need to be decisive. We need to be united. And uh, we cannot afford losing time in, in, in making uh, the right steps uh, in order Europe indeed to be a leader in both digital and green transformation. Thank you. To stay with uh, the topic of money a little bit, uh, we just exit a historic moment. We, we, we created an, a huge investment fund, uh, Recovery EU, 800 billion uh, euros, which uh, is now supposed to be also redirected a little bit to help uh, support uh, energy crisis needs and uh, those kind of things. So I would uh, ask the Commission to, to kick it off and, and explain to us how this might help us this the existing funds. And also I would invite uh, uh, both ministers here to, to reflect on the plans that were drawn before 
the crisis with Russia, the war uh, in Ukraine er erupted. So, but just let's start with you. Yeah, thank you. So, both the next generation EU, the budget which has been renegotiated during the COVID crisis, and the recovery and resilience facility, they are of course meant to kick on the economy after the pandemic. And as I said, we need to adapt. So after the beginning of the war in Ukraine, it is constantly reconsidering how the national recovery plans can adjust to what is happening. But at the same time, the flexibility in these recovery plans, which has been already agreed and it is the long procedure, uh, you can imagine within the European- 700 pages. Institutions, <laughs> exactly. Um, it's not easy to allow because there is a changing political environment and the minister mentioned it himself. We see what is happening around us in Europe in different countries. There are different uh, or rather new actors taking power. There are maybe unknown expectations from these players, political players. So it is also the strategy of the European Commission to to keep the recovery funds and the recovery plans as it was initially agreed and to allow only for additional resources to be added as loans for the specific situations, like for example, the energy situation. But let me remind ourselves again that uh, the recovery facility and the re recovery plans had uh, two conditions, among many others. But the major one was that 37% of the spending has to be uh, yeah, uh, directed towards the green transition and at least 20% to the digital transition. So again, this is all complex and uh, the money which are available and which are for the first time um, uh, being uh, negotiated for the member states at the capital market, because this is also a novelty for the next generation EU budget. For me, it means greater integration because the loan will be paid together by the member states, but this we can discuss at another forum. Uh, so these money are available for member states with already the vision that the future generation will be binded by the commitment to get back the money, but also with the vision that this is exactly for the next generation to make sure that the happiness you've mentioned is, uh, is achieved. <laughs> Even though I would like to challenge you on this, like, are we here to be happy or what is our... <laughs> And again, it's for another forums. I hope I answered your question. I can go deeper into the different models of uh, the funds, but I think yes, no. This is this is a great answer, and also um, please interject if you yeah, want. If I may, uh, because we do have indeed the 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 the, the, the streamlined uh, multi-annual financial framework with the different operational programs on one side. We do have the next generation EU and the recovery and resilience facility and the plans, which are financed in the in the countries. We do have our complementary, uh, complementary uh, co-financing, uh, which we are providing, and we as an EIB group, we are providing uh, something like uh, 80 billion euro per year in support of the different uh, investments inside and outside of EU. But uh, what I wanted to, to, to just to, to follow up on the, the investment, first of all, the investment needs are large. And neither, no one, no, neither governments, local authorities, public, se public or private sector can, cannot achieve to succeed uh, with the targets or to overcome the, 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 the consequences of the crisis and of the war by itself on its own. So we need to, to unite forces and efforts, first thing. Second, uh, we see the tendency, especially in the countries uh, in our region, uh, uh, preference or dependence on grants and uh, state budget subsidies. And I think, uh, and they are not enough. So the only way, if we are to succeed, if we are to fill the, 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 the investment gap, is to, to leverage and to crowd in private financing and to use uh, and to, 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 to mobilize resources based on, uh, on um, uh, as we call it, reuse of funds. So unless we, we are investing smartly 
with uh, with efficient uh, and with good project, good incentives and repayable project. In order, first of all, the repayable project, are, you have the incentive to implement them successfully much faster. And using the reflows, the repayments, you can reinvest and reinvest many times. So uh, and this is a very important element of the discussion. So grants are necessary. State subsidies are extremely important for certain sectors, for, uh, for, for social, with the social dimension, but for all the rest where we can have indeed the, the, um, the, 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 the reinvestment that they are in place, we need to stimulate it and we need to invest more and more in this kind of more innovative combined instruments supported with grants, but at the same time to have this uh, incentive to repay and to be successful in the, in the implementation of projects. So this is my emphasis uh, and I believe that after this programming period, amid, uh, amid uh, uh, all crises and all the different uh, challenges we are facing, from the next programming period we will have less grants, much more loans, financial instruments and more flexible and new innovative instruments. And this is, this is uh, where we need to build the, the skills, capacity and knowledge to be able successfully to, to, to develop those. Thank you. Uh, I, I wanted to ask uh, Minister Doeg, um, uh, do you uh, to reflect on the recovery fund as well, which uh, you have uh, laying around from the previous government as well, and do you feel enough uh, flexibility to to invest it in the, uh, the green and the digital projects you, 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 you want? I will be very sincere. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I will be. <laughs> uh, yes, so uh, our uh, recovery and resilient plan was prepared, prepared by the previous government, which is not a problem on its own, but we don't even have the same definition for what is green and what is digital. So now we have to implement projects that we don't believe in. And this is a problem. And this is why we need the flexibility. Also, the milestones that were set, some of the milestones are simply not achievable. And this is a huge problem for us. So um, the government that we have now, is uh, we would like to have more digital. We would like to have more green. Uh, in our national recovery and resilience plans. Also, the needs of the people are different because uh, I was um, writing emails to the European Commission uh, when uh, the previous government was preparing uh, the, the plan that they're simply not involving everybody. I was leading a digital innovation hub, which is one of the mechanisms, and the digital innovation hubs were not involved in the preparement of the uh, recovery and resilience plans. So here, um, but the most important thing really is the needs changed. The needs of the uh, people, the needs of the industry, uh, because of uh, also of the energy crisis. So uh, we uh, believe that the European Commission will be a little bit flexible here uh, and that we will be able uh, to, to make some changes. Uh, so I think maybe, uh I'll ask maybe the commission to respond if, if she wants, and then, uh, or not, uh, also ask uh, Mr. Bartosz if, uh, if you want to weigh in here a little bit. And after, uh, I would like to go to the questions uh, from the room uh, as well. No, I hear you. And uh, believe me, I have a deep understanding for your situation. Um, I could say that the situation is similar in this country, right? Because the plan was prepared by the previous government, and then there is a change also, um, you know, in maybe more progressive projects. I believe that there is a space for the reasonable balance in uh, you know, finding the way how to implement maybe more green, more digital projects. And um, I'm sure that the colleagues in Brussels which are in charge are also hearing you. But uh, for example, here in the Czech Republic, uh, in my office of the European Commission, we have two colleagues which are in a daily contact with the ministries, uh, with the Minister of um, uh, Digital Development, Minister of Industry. And they are trying also to uh, negotiate and to facilitate the exchange between the office in Brussels and between the ministries to, to bring out the needs which are necessary. and. I think that nobody wants to have a rigid recovery plan which is not responding to the challenges anymore because the entire idea of the recovery and resilience facility is to respond to the current challenges and needs. So uh, 
I would wait a little bit. I mean, still push, but I'm sure that uh, you know that the voice of um, ministers from member states will be heard. That would be my uh, anticipation. Yes, I actually can say that the discussion with the Commission works okay. Uh, we talk about the issues we've got with the milestones, as you mentioned, or with the projects that were just somehow, you know, put it in there and they don't make sense anymore. One thing uh, I'd like to depict, and of course, it's the skills, right? And I'm talking about it because I teach on, I taught on university, I got a young uh, daughter, that young people are not getting the skills they need and old people are forget, or older people are forgetting. And then you've got this middle, they never had it, and some of them had. So the situation would be in the future very problematic. So next year, if we need to focus on someone, 2023, the year of skills, empowerment of the women in IT, so Europe won't have 20% of a female employed in ICT related, but would have it significantly represented as we are on half, right, male and female. But the thing is, uh, I don't really, uh, I'm not focused on that, what kind of money currently is on stock, because all of the horizontal principles are already agreed and common. And if you want to use European money, either it's a European investment bank or it's a recovery fund, or it would be a loan, which historically no one wanted, but everybody wants it right now, probably we too as well. But uh, so, so all of them principles are present, right? Uh, and uh, so, so any money that is coming in there, you could probably build a new coal, uh, coal, coal, uh, brown coal uh, facility for produce. You, you won't. You still got the old ones, right? One thing that somehow doesn't fit to this concept is that there is a different level of involvement of the ecosystem of each country, right? If you are less digital. So no big deal, right? Especially with the green targets, right? It makes a difference in, if you are in the crisis. For example, Czech Republic, when gas was considered before the war, and it's reflected in the recovery fund, but also in modernization fund, right? It was, okay, we do gas temporarily for next 10 years, and then we go to something that's completely CO2 neutral, right? But all of them projects prepare of this kind of transformation are nonsense because it would require either cheap gas or we would have to be able to produce a biogas by our own facility, which is not clean enough. If you produce a hydrogen, it's from the coal, so it doesn't make a sense anyway. So we have to rethink very fast. And in the time of the crisis, uh, when we had those till the third. 2030, 2050, it allows states and its businesses, and we have to say that the cooperation is essential because we are politicians, we've got visions, we are leaders. We want not to have things like that in the good of the people, which I believe we know, but uh, we have to ask often, more often. But then it's obvious if you are just like pure business company, you know, uh, why should you care uh, that much about changing your business model? You are pushed by the society to be social responsible, but your main goal is to create sustainable business model of the growth that will make your stockholders money or to you as an owner. And it was historically in many things that keeping the old business model or old resources, even if you pay whatever fees or you get less loan, is just like better for your business model because you're still getting the money and you don't have to invest because it's sufficient and you don't look towards 20 years in the future. Which, uh, like we have to get rid of that way of thinking. COVID showed us that the cooperation of all of the participants from the academics who are not, you know, uh, indexing their data in expensive databases anymore because they need somebody else to have that research on a COVID vaccine, whatever invention in the healthcare. And, and this cooperation requires to actually uh, don't stick to the old modules of thinking just because it gives you relatively peaceful ruling as a governor. Nobody else that you something expensive, you know, I have to use something that I'm not used to, but also for the businesses that the, this transformation is something they want to do. And, and it's worth of it, especially with the energy in the future, with the current prices. And, and this is some, something like Vogue moment, right? If this, this doesn't prove you were wrong, guys, with somehow slowing that acceleration, for example, uh, regarding the energy resources, 
this is the moment when everybody had to agree that was a that was a bad uh, bad attitude towards something that's common and if the state is not prosperous right the companies are not prosperous and europe is quite a big so if we want to succeed and be leader and we will be and in the space technology in the future and in the others this is the only way cooperation that uh, is mutually beneficial like nobody is actually creating extras on that cooperation neither do governments to pumping their businesses you know, to whatever, but not the businesses because of unregulated environment on abusing some of them benefits that are given by EU by providing free market opportunities and as well subsidies that are currently going to the business segment. So recover and resilience fund, it's not like what the government's gonna do and we pay buy better laptops and uh, make cool e yeah. It's a transformation money to entire society. And we have to understand that specific moment uh, and we have to succeed. You wanted to say something short because I wanted to get to the questions. Yes, sure, two, 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 two elements. As pandemic was catalyst for digital digitalization, the, the current energy crisis is a catalyst for uh, decarbonization. At the same time, companies are reluctant, uh, as, as, as the minister said, to invest because we are living in an environment of so many uncertainties uh, uh, where, and of course, companies are afraid. So wh what is our role? I mean, uh, governments, uh, public institutions, commissions around all the funds to ensure that we provide de-risking de facilities, instruments, support, uh, frameworks, whatever is needed in order for, for the private sector to be, not to be afraid to, to invest, because this is, this is the, 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 the right moment of, uh, of doing so. so. This is what uh, just I wanted to say. And one, one last thing, Europe counts for only 10% of CO2 emissions. So if we are to be successful in green uh, transformation, we need all other uh, global actors to be, to, to be together. So we need to act globally, not on European continent only, but we need to act globally with the uh, US uh, and with, mm. with, uh, with Asia, with other continents. Otherwise, it makes no sense. Well, that's a great segue because someone asked, um, <coughs> Well, let me just first, because there's a lot of questions about this particular subject. Um, I think a lot of people want to know, and we can stay with this a little bit, does this moment actually speed up the transition? Because there's obviously a lot of opportunities and, and, and advantages to, 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 to uh, switch to renewables, but there's also, as you say, a lot of uncertainty. So maybe someone else uh, would want to weigh in and answer that. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it. Whoever wants, yeah, please. Maybe I will start um, and remind uh, about the, the plan which has been proposed by the Commission called Repower EU. And it was in late May when, as a reaction to the aggression in Ukraine and the energy insecurity and uh, non affordability, etc., etc., the targets for getting more renewable resources by 2030 was increased. So I think that this is the answer to your question. So it is seen as an opportunity. But for this, the enabling framework is necessary. So there was also a suggestion how to ensure that the switch to renewable is speeded up through uh, creating the go-to zones, through um, simplifying the license um, procedure and many others. And of course, through the massive investments. So I think that if we see it in the complexity and we prepare the measures which are also not only like one way to go and you know one uh, size fits all but there is a flexibility in how we can achieve these targets which needs to be realistic but ambitious to keep the leadership to get back to your first question i think that this is achievable but i'm the um, optimist by nature any pessimists in the room? No? Um, so I, I like, yeah. <laughs> okay, we have to, uh, even though we are members of the European Union for many years, right? And uh, a lot of legislation could be somehow in sync with the, with the European legislation. Uh, sometimes it's a, it's a situation of the individual country legislation system. You know, we, we create a, 
I'm in there for 13 years, and I was uh, first day elected to government 2017, so basically up to parliament. So basically, we are not somehow responsible for the mess in specific uh, uh, legislation regarding uh, how the energy is being uh, uh, solved and regulated within the country, uh, what's the shape of uh, construction legislation, for example. And historically, you had an issue, or you had somebody who lobbed a lot, so we had a lot of weird things of, uh, so first of all, all the countries somehow make uh, placing renewables in the field easier, right? With the, either with some amendments or they change the law or they made some exceptions. And uh, even the Germany, you know, speeded up the bureaucratic process of doing that. And we are saying the target announced by, target announced by countries. Uh, France was today about the, about the parking lots for a lot of cars. If it's of that size, they're going to be in five years, everything covered with renewables, which also helps uh, the cars not to be so heated from the sun, but whatever, with this amount of production. And those are the goals. But then you somehow hit to the, uh, let's say, historically messy or not transformed legislation. So even though you've got idea, you've got money, you've got place to do it, you have, which is an important thing, because the requests for the, not only for the solars, it's like increasing and we are having troubles as we had during the COVID crisis. And even now with the chips, we are having problems to have a, let's say, working technology of a solar and energy solution. I'm not talking about the batteries yet, that's another thing, which is important. So basically, even though all of them criteria is fulfilled, and, and it's good when you do them, right? Because then it's the only thing that you need is to change the legislation. So, so it could also be stopped on this individual commitment based on you, you just have so messy system that you cannot push it through on the national level, which means legislative change, which even if you've got majority in the parliament can take you a year if it's not like very uh, current thing of fixing something that goes completely wrong because of the crisis. So that's important. And then one more thing, uh, which we let in COVID, and it would lead in the future, you said more integration because we are using basically federal money, right? Uh, the, the, all the countries are borrowing money. It's not like uh, uh, from the subsidies to EU from the countries, but uh, we shall think of not Talking sustainability and resilience and sovereignty, not think of that individual countries in all of them things, which we found in COVID, right? Protect the borders, okay, right? And then uh, why shall we buy things together? We buy it faster this way, or we make the private deal on, on government to government. So many things that will be produced should not be in individual country by its own implementation in digital. Do we have sufficient ID specialists, developers to do it? Many things could be done already as a digital common solution to any state that want to use it, right? We, no, no, not all the states would have a chip factory, you know, obviously. So place it somewhere, then other can benefit for them and think of a strategic things as for entire Europe, right? Rather than if Czech Republic would be sustainable in this and that and that. Obviously, uh, in many cases, we won't be. That's why the partnership and solidarity and uh, common approach is very important. Sure. I will be very short. When we're speaking, no, no, no problem. Uh, when we're speaking about digital and green transformation, we really need to see uh, holistically because we're speaking about solar plan, uh, panels, but we need raw materials. We need aluminium. <laughs> and if we want to produce them, this is not clean we, and we lose a lot of energy. So we really need to see the whole picture here. <coughs> Uh, and when we're speaking about uh, batteries, we also need materials and we also have some waste there. So uh, this is what I'm missing. We are uh, looking only from one perspective, uh, but we're forgetting about the other perspective. So uh, I hope that we will start discussing uh, the whole picture soon. I have two words for you, strategic autonomy. <laughs> Three words, open strategic autonomy. Yeah, but, uh, 
So it's not all or nothing. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's not that, okay, I use a like example that are actually known to, and uncommon people understand that. Obviously, when we were talking about the battery production, there is a secondary usage, for example, uh, on the, in the, when we talk about affordable housing, as a storage in, next to the housing facilities, but still it's not the life cycle of the battery is not over yet, then it degrades to the level that you cannot use it anymore. What are we going to do with that? So the circular economy as a part of sustainability is very, very important of the resources, of the technology that we use. But you know how long, and it's not over yet, to, uh, let's say, eco-friendly design. You still go to the store and you can buy a toy for a kid of this size with this plastic bag, right, over that plastic cover. So, so we produce a lot of things that we don't need that actually polluting the planet. And how hard is to find 27 countries agreed on something that uh, is just quite simple to understand. And what the fights we are getting currently with our USB-C, the only charging, uh, uh, charging end of the, but it makes sense if you think holistic. And, and those little things actually do make change as well. So yeah, completely agree. One, cent. one, cent. one, one sentence. sentence. Okay, and, one and on sentence. top of everything which was said, we should not forget that the best way uh, to, to, to succeed is savings, energy savings. Mm. And there is a huge potential in buildings, in uh, public, private buildings. Potential is huge. So we need to focus, of, of course, renewables, but also energy efficiency, energy savings. Mm. This, is the, uh, this is key. Well, I, of course, uh, we need enough people to do it, as uh, you pointed out. Um, so there's a lot more things we could discuss, but uh, we don't have any time anymore. But I, I did want to raise one question uh, because someone asked, um, how is Europe going to lead the digital trend, uh, transition if, okay, as long as we are the land where many unicorns are born only to see them leave? So <laughs> successful startups, they grow uh, and then they leave. So that's basically a European story a little bit. Um, do you want to weigh in there? Uh, yes, this is the biggest problem because first of all, any, any, any innovation, any, uh, any great idea, we have, we have plenty of ideas, not all of them materialize, but at the moment we do have uh, the, the unicorns, they, they are just very w quickly attracted especially in the U.S., because what we still are not, let's say, fast enough. That's why I said always time is of essence. We are still not maybe fast enough in Europe to, to, to finance, to support them from the start when they are still at the riskier phase. This is first thing. Uh, and, 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 and second is, is also to, uh, to, and to have the right incentives. And I believe this is what exactly we, we are doing uh, to, to to be brave enough to finance even those who might not succeed. And this is, this is, this is the biggest problem in Europe so far. We were, we were not taking the risk. We were financing only those who has a real chance to succeed. Yeah. Now we need to, the game changer is we need to finance much more if, and to take the risk that maybe 50, 60, 70 percent won't succeed. This except, is the only except the only failure. Way. Is this something you want to weigh in on as well? I agree with you. We uh, we should not be afraid of uh, failing, uh, but see that as a learning lesson. But I think things will change. If you just uh, take a look what was happening in the last few days, Meta uh, just fired uh, more than 10,000 people, uh, then uh, Twitter. Uh, so I think things are changing a lot. and. Uh, Maybe there are some that are leaving, but there are people that are coming to Europe as well. So I, I will stay optimistic. Thank you. And I would only add that we will succeed in keeping these if we really reduce the red tapes for companies and if we create a real digital single market in Europe. Because as big as the market is, as interesting for the companies it remains. But maybe one last word if everybody has a right for the last word. That's allowed. I, I, thank you. Uh, because I, I just have to say that this whole discussion about uh, you know, investments and uh, the possibilities and um, you know, the need to focus on the green and digital transition, it, is, it has one underlined principle that we have to continue our support to Ukraine because Ukraine has to win and Putin has to lose. Thank you so much. Uh, sadly, this is the end. Uh, we don't have any more time, but I want to thank 
my panelists. It was really good to uh, speak with you. And um, well, have a great evening, uh, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.